So, if you listen to metal music, you probably know who Slipknot is. They're probably one of the most well-known, more of the modern metal acts. You know, if you want to call them metal. Some people call them hard rock, whatever. I'm just going to refer to them as a metal band for this. And they grew really, really popular alongside bands like Korn and System of a Down in the early and mid-2000s. But it's been a while. Uh, I think it's been six years since they released their last album. So a lot of people are really excited about their new album. And I think it's called uh, Point Five: The Grey Chapters, I think is what it's called. Um, and I wanted to talk about their singles from this one. They've released three so far. I think there's one called Custer, which is their newest one, uh, the negative one, and The Devil and I. And so I've never been a big fan of this band. I honestly haven't listened to that much of them. But what I heard, I wasn't terribly thrilled with. I didn't think they're a bad band. I still don't. They're just not really my style, personally. But I have a lot of friends who really like them, and so when they heard when they told me that this new album was coming out, I figured I'd check out the singles from it. And so the first song was uh, the negative one. And this song, I have to say, I like some parts of it. I, it's, I'm not really sure what to expect with it, but they use a lot of more of the uh, industrial elements that aren't used as much in metal, in metal music today. The stuff that I listen to, anyway. So I was kind of a nice, refreshing surprise. They use some electronics, and I don't generally like that too much, but I think here it, it works because of the attitude and the atmosphere set by the song. And I know these guys aren't really a death metal act, but I feel like the vocals on this song could have been harsher, especially given the lyrical content. They could have been heavier and more forceful. They feel like a, kind of an odd combination between like radio metal clean vocals and like melodic death or metalcore uh, harsh vocals, and it doesn't really work to me. I like uh, Corey Taylor as a vocalist. I like him in uh, Stone Sour, actually, as a band I like from them. But I feel like the vocals here just they could have been heavier and harsher, and also the drums could have been a little bit louder to give it more of a darker, uh, more aggressive edge that I think this song needs. Overall, I, this is a nice surprise. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but it came out pretty well, I think. This is a nice choice for a single. And it's not a song that I'll, I myself will be going back to, but if you like Slipknot, I think this will be a song you'll enjoy. It harkens back more to the really early stuff than the uh, more middle period. And the second one, the second single off this album is called The Devil and I. And this song, I didn't like this one as much. I was, you know, kind of middling, maybe a little bit more positive with the first song, but this one, it's not necessarily bad, but it's really, really, really repetitive. Like, you can listen to it once, and then the next time you listen to it, you'll know all the lyrics to it. It's super basic, and obviously just meant to be played on the radio. I know these guys are really popular, that stuff's played on the radio a lot, it's like a Venice Sevenfold, but this song really hits you over the face with it, and it's so repetitive, and I think it's, it's mostly clean vocals, which I don't necessarily dislike. Again, I think Corey Taylor is actually a pretty good uh, vocalist when he really tries, and I think on this track his voice sounds okay, but it's just, this it's not interesting enough. This one doesn't include any surprises like the first track did with the industrial electronic elements. And it's just a really basic track with really repetitive vocals. Just, you know, repeat the name of the song multiple times and have a chorus. And, I don't know, this one I wasn't really impressed with. But I don't necessarily think it's a bad track. I think it's just one that will just be played on the radio and people enjoy it. And no one will really think twice about whether or not it's one of their best works. I don't think anyone will think that, but maybe that's not what they were going for. And the uh, last track on here, Custer. This one I've only listened to, I think, once, because I, I couldn't listen to it again. I really did not like this one. I saw like a uh, tag on it that said it was going to be the heaviest song on their album. And so I was a little bit excited then. I thought that I uh, that it would be really good, you know. I liked the heavier elements on their other two songs from this album, so I was excited about it. But honestly, I really didn't enjoy this. Maybe I need to listen to it again or something, but of the three, this is definitely the weakest. It's Again, it's really repetitive, and the volume for each of the instruments just seems really out of place. Some of them are too loud. The drums, I think, are a little bit too loud at parts. The guitars are a little bit too loud at parts, too quiet at others. And it doesn't feel balanced, and it doesn't feel polished. And I know people say that you know metal doesn't have to be polished, and I agree with that. But here, it's just the production and mixing of it doesn't make sense, and it comes out sounding really weird at some parts. Some parts it kind of you know molds back and 
turns into what I would expect it to sound like, and it works okay. But then it diverges, and you know, certain instruments get louder, the vocals go off, he's, as something happens, and it's just really confusing. Really, it's a cluttered song. They didn't edit it down enough. I think it's it's too much. It's too compact. It feels really claustrophobic, and not like in a good atmospheric way. It's just it feels too chaotic to the point where it needs to be trimmed down. They need to trim the fat on this one. I didn't really like this one as much. Uh, I'll listen to it again and see maybe if I change my thoughts on it. I don't know. But if you like Slipknot, I think this will probably be uh, an album you'll enjoy. Again, myself, I'm not really a huge fan of them. I don't really listen, go out of my way to listen to them or listen to them in my free time. But if you like them, you know, I think you'll enjoy this one. I would definitely suggest uh, the negative one if you were going to choose one of these singles to listen to. I think that's probably the best one. Uh, the other two, you heard me say it. I wasn't really impressed with them at all, so thanks for listening.